All right, everybody, here I am, Paul Stetsowitz with Weeks Aircraft doing a mechanics corner and update on the BF-108 project. Uh, actually, we are actually one year into this project. I think the first video we did was uh, almost exactly a year ago. And you would think we'd have more done, but of course, this is a very slow process, as it always is. And actually, as far as man hours in the airplane, uh, uh, one mechanic for a year is 2,000 man hours, but unfortunately, there are other things that I have to do here, other responsibilities that I have. So I haven't, this past year on the airplane, hasn't been a full time effort on the aircraft. There's actually 600 hours in the airplane up to this point. That includes my time, a little bit of Rick's time. He did some sheet metal work on the aircraft. And of course, Dave Martin um, doing some welding and fixture stands. So right now, 600 man hours in the airplane. This upcoming year, 2019, there should be more time spent on the aircraft full time. So things should move along a little bit quicker. But we're going to talk about kind of where we left off on the last episode, and that was removing the wing, uh, excuse me, removing the paint off of the right wing. And that is what is sitting right here in front of me. Uh, after we stripped all the paint off of it, uh, not any big surprises here, although it was a little more difficult because on the top of this wing, there was even more of this filler than there was on the left wing. And we are concerned that in the process of removing it, even with the plastic media, that we were going to get some skin damage from the heat buildup. And so I ended up sanding off all the filler off the top of the wing by hand with a DA sander. And this took like three days. Um, but uh, it was worth the effort because I think it was uh, a lot easier on the airframe itself. Um, the rest of it came off pretty clean. Like I said, no big surprises. A few skins here and there that have to be replaced. I think generally speaking, we're probably gonna replace a lot of skins just because they're just easy skins to make. A lot of the skins have little minor imperfections in them. Uh, so uh, the plan is we're probably gonna replace some skins on this wing also. But the wing overall came out really nice. It's very clean inside. There's still some paint inside the wing that has to be removed, but once we get the wing opened up, we'll be able to get that paint out of there. Uh, still, uh, there were sections of this wing where the paint and the filler actually chipped off in a few places. And I actually took a couple of those pieces and I mic'd them. And it was upwards between 60 to 80 thousandths of filler in some areas, which is just, uh, just crazy. But uh, it's all off now. The wing feels better. Uh, it's nice and clean. And so um, that is what we're going to do next on this is uh, get it prepped to put in the fixture stand. We actually have the left wing in the fixture stand. Uh, Dave Martin, our welder, finished that up last week. And so we're going to talk about that and uh, what goes into building a fixture stand and why we actually uh, build a stand. All right, here we are with the left wing into the fixture stand right here uh, that Dave has built for us. Um, one thing we want to talk about real quick is some people have asked questions about uh, how much lighter is the airplane going to be after removal of all the paint? And that's a good question. We know the airplane is going to be lighter because there was so much paint and filler on the aircraft. But to try to figure out exactly how much lighter, it would be a very difficult thing to do. You'd have to weigh the wing before you start the stripping process. You'd have to put it on scales, You'd then, then strip it, and then weigh it. And it's a lot of effort to find out exactly. We know. Uh, that it is going to be lighter and generally speaking the entire airplane is going to be uh, lighter which is actually going to help the airplane performance wise so uh, good question uh, but basically we don't know exactly how much lighter it's going to be but what we're going to talk about here uh, is the fixture stand now of course after we removed all the paint we found out that there are some issues with both wings and that requires removal of some of the skins. Now, what we want to do is we want to take a lot of these skins off, but what you don't want to do is get the wing all out of shape. When they build these wings at the factory, of course, that there were certain things that were set in place, the dimension of the spar, if there was any wash put into the wing. And so what we don't want to do is when we take the wing apart, we don't want to disturb any of that. So the purpose behind a fixture stand is to ensure that the wing as it is now from the factory, undamaged, is going to stay exactly where it is and that is the purpose of this. Now it's, Dave spent a lot of time on this thing and basically what it does, it's gonna, we're gonna try to pick up as many hard points as possible and in the case of the 108 wing, we've picked up three points up here at the butt of the wing. Now these three points of course are the points uh, where the wing uh, attaches to the fuselage. There's pins that actually go through and attaches it to the fuselage. So we picked up those three points. We also picked up uh, the three points on top here which include the flap uh, aileron connections. 
So that's all nice and rigid. That's going to keep all that nice and straight. That down there is going to keep the dimension here in the front spar where it's supposed to be. And also the last thing we did was picked up, we removed the last rib out of the tip and we actually went in there and there's actually a hole through the spar that was there from the factory. We actually went in there and attached to that. All that said, it's all straight and connected. It's stiff. It actually has a big frame on the floor. We're actually going to lag it to the floor to keep it uh, stationary. And once all this is done, basically, if we had to, we can take the entire wing apart. And with all this in place, all these known points, uh, it's going to allow us to put the wing back exactly the way it was before. So uh, that's going to start here pretty soon. I'm still waiting for tooling, for dimpling the skins. We have received some of the rivets uh, to replace uh, the rivets that we have to remove. Um, so pretty soon here, we're going to start getting into this wing. And once we actually do open it up, we're going to be able to get inside better and remove some of the remaining paint. The paint that's inside the wing has been very difficult to get out. A lot of it was flaking off, and I thought it was basically going to come out of there pretty easily. But uh, a lot of it that is stuck is really stuck. And I think what they actually did when they built this wing at the factory, I think when they, they assembled all this thing, I believe they actually submerged the wing, like they dunked it and they put, they, they kind of filled it and then they rotated the wing and then they drained it out because everything was covered in paint. It's thicker in areas in some places, very thin in others, it covered everything. Uh, you could see runs in the paint. Um, and the only way I could figure out that they covered it so well was that they must have like basically dipped the whole wing and then drained it out. I'm not sure if that's exactly how they did it, but it's going to be difficult getting some of this paint uh, out of the wing. But it, it all has to come out because uh, a lot of it has flaked off and there's a little bit of light corrosion inside that we have to take care of. So um, beautiful fixture stand. Dave really does a great job for us with these things. And you can see just the amount of time it takes uh, to build just that. And if you get into a larger airplane with a large wing or large center section, then you end up building something uh, that even has to be bigger. But this is necessary uh, when it comes time to uh, disassemble these wings to make sure that everything goes back the way it was originally from the factory. Here we are back at the fuselage and we're going to talk about a few things that we're uh, dealing with on this particular section of the airplane. Of course, uh, waiting for Dave to uh, do the fixture stand and also waiting for rivets and other things. Um, I couldn't really do much work on the wings, so again you have to move on to something else. So in the case of um, the one away project, I decided to pull all the glass out of the airplane. This airplane of course has plexiglass uh, windshield and the door openings and I uh, decided to pull all this off because there's a couple things here that uh, I have to deal with that I've never actually had to deal with before on a restoration is, and that is that all the trim and the fasteners that hold the glass onto the frame of the airplane are actually chrome plated. Um, again, this is something, this is more like an automotive antique car restoration kind of deal, but this is actually part of the trim. There's a part that goes on the bottom, there's some on the top. And all this originally um, was chrome plated. Uh, and that's, that's, that's from the photos and everything that we see. You can actually see a little section on here where the chrome plating is um, still nice and intact, but it's all pitted, it's peeling off in areas. Um, so I called a plating shop uh, that does really nice professional chrome plating and they're over in uh, Melbourne, Florida. And I got to take all this stuff over there. And I found out that it's going to take months to get some of this stuff back because they're so backlogged with work. So I figured I better get all this off now, get it to the platers. So I might not see it for six months. So I need to get this kind of into the, in the pipeline to get this thing going. So uh, all the glass came off. This is actually one of the, uh, one of the frames, one of the doors uh, for the 108. It's a steel uh, structure piece. It's actually in really good shape. There's no major problems. This one piece, uh, I think on the other side, had a little hole in the bottom where water had sat in it. That's got to be fixed, but generally speaking, a uh, really nice piece. Uh, but the glass on this is actually held on uh, kind of odd. Uh, most airplanes that I've worked on normally just have regular screws, either slotted or Phillips head. But on the 108, all the glass is held on by these little special uh, fasteners here. Um, these are really unique. Uh, they're actually smooth on the outside. There's no place to put a screwdriver or anything. And it has this little special nut on the back side that has like a little slot. And these were originally chrome plated, front and back. So all these had to come out. These all have to go to the chrome plater. I can't wait to see what they say when I bring all this stuff in to get it plated. But as I was taking this apart, I realized that this little nut on the back 
Uh, when it's all the way screwed in, you can't get a screwdriver on it because the, the, the screw itself comes through and it blocks you. And I'm trying to figure out what, what, how you get that off of there. Then after thinking about the project and over the past uh, month or years, or one year that we've worked on the airplane, I remember that in the special toolkit that came with the airplane, there were some kind of odd things. And one of those odd things was, was this tool here. And on the very tip of it is actually a screwdriver that has a little thing cut out of it. And that, what this is for is to <laughs> remove these little nuts. It fits in here perfectly and you unscrew these things and that's how you remove uh, all those pieces. So using an original tool, which is kind of cool uh, to get that out. But there are a bunch of these in the airplane. Uh, they're pitted. Some of them are not in the best of shape. I'm missing a few. So I'm going to have to talk to my friends in, uh, in Germany and see if I can get some more of these because this is a, uh, a very unique part uh, to the airplane, something that you, if you had to make it, you could probably take it to the machine shop and have somebody make a few, but it'd be very costly. So hopefully we can find some original pieces. Uh, so that has to get done. And also the plexiglass uh, we have made already. Uh, we, there's actually one of the original uh, windshield pieces right there, but uh, about three or four years ago, I found a company up in Pennsylvania that actually had all the molds for the 108, and they actually made all new glass uh, for the airplane. So that's sitting and waiting. Of course, all that plexiglass has to be uh, trimmed and fitted to the aircraft, but that's going to happen, of course, down the road when we get all the plating and the chrome back from the shop. Uh, another thing that we've never had to deal with before uh, on a restoration, and that is drapery <laughs> or curtains. The 108 actually has uh, sunshades in it. We probably mentioned this in one of the other uh, episodes, and this is actually one of them right here. It's a little pleated uh, sunshade that goes up inside there. And it's pleated because they, they actually, you could actually fold it out of the way and put some little clips around it. So if you didn't want them there, you could uh, move them out of the way. Um, these are in not the best of shape. They're kind of brittle. These are original to the airplane. Uh, two of them are already torn. Um, but I've actually been able to find some material that's very close to this. And I actually found somebody who's able to sew this and do all this work for us. So um, that is something that has to be made uh, for the airplane also. So some things I never had to deal with before, chrome plating and, and curtains in an airplane, but we have to deal with it on this particular project. Uh, one last thing on the canopy, uh, we like to talk about parts. Every once in a while I come across a part that's really interesting. And somebody mentioned in one of the videos, I'm like I'm geeking out on a part, and this is a perfect example of that. And that is the door latch mechanism uh, out of the 108. And I took this piece out, and this actually fits inside this door frame right here. This whole piece that slides up and down inside of there and then the door handle goes in here. And that's of course what opens and closes the door. Well, when I took this out, as you can see, it's just a beautiful part. It's actually aluminum and brass. And I polished that piece all up really nicely. Uh, the handle itself is an aluminum piece. I was able to sand it out and polish that piece out. Um, just a beautiful piece of engineering. And actually putting what was interesting about this, it was sitting inside of there like this. And this is the piece, of course, that the handle goes in. And once I got it all loose, I couldn't get it out of the, out of the frame. And we're looking at it, it's like, well, how did, they, how did they get that out of there? We're looking at it, Ken's looking at it. Some other people from the shop were like, how does that come out of there? How does that piece remove? And after a while, we just was messing around with it and I figured out, and when you push on this, that comes out. So you took this piece and you slide it in there, and then you take this piece and you drop it down, and then you slide this back over again, push that back in again. And it locks it in place. It's very clever, but it took me, it took us like an hour to figure that out. We're just, we're being a little stupid, but of course I never took one of these out before. So uh, the little things you kind of learn along the way are kind of interesting. Um, but that's what's going on with the canopy frames. Uh, it's going to be a while before we get back to that. I think it's going to take uh, a, a number of months to get uh, all the chrome plating back. Um, but it's one of the things I really enjoy is plexiglass work, so I'm, a little, I'm pretty excited about getting that back and putting the plexiglass in and trimming it uh, is, is something I really enjoy. And it's a big part of the airplane, of course, on the 108. So uh, when the, we get all that back and get the chrome on there and get the new curtains inside of there, it's going to look really, it's going to look really neat. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about uh, some other things that we're working on, uh, mainly the control services uh, to this particular project. Well, we're going to talk about a few other things that we've been working on while we're waiting for the fixture stand to get done. And a couple of things here we mentioned in some of the other episodes, um, 
trading for parts and getting parts from other sources, finding original pieces. One of those, of course, we mentioned that all the struts for the horizontal stabilizer uh, for our airplane were, were no longer usable. They were pitted, they were rusted, they had dents on them. And actually, we got the pieces from Germany. Uh, actually, the Messerschmitt Foundation uh, actually uh, worked out a deal with us for these pieces. Uh, had them on their shelf. They cleaned them, test them, NDT'd them, primed them. Uh, actually sent us paperwork to go along with it, uh, very thorough. Uh, so that's nice to have all those pieces ready to go. Basically all I have to do is paint those the proper color and install them on the airplane. The end fittings that go on all this, uh, those have already been uh, plated uh, and so those are ready to go on. So one less thing we have to worry about. So that's nice. Uh, shout out to the Messerschmitt Foundation for helping us out with that. And other things we're working on are the control surfaces. Um, the flaps, ailerons, elevators, and a rudder. And the rudder is actually here right beside us. And these, of course, had a lot of original paint on them from the factory. They had a lot of glue and dope from when the fabric was attached to these pieces. And most of the time, control surfaces, generally speaking, are very difficult to strip the paint off of them because they're, as you can see, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies. They're kind of delicate pieces. There's openings where stripper can get inside as far as using a chemical stripper. So a lot of times on some projects I've worked on, we've actually removed the fabric from the control surface. And if the paint itself is in good condition, a lot of times we'll just sand it out and put another layer of uh, primer on it. Just because it's just very difficult to strip and paint. Uh, but in the case of the 108, couldn't really do that. I'm trying to figure out how to get the paint off of these things. I used the plastic media on the wings and I decided, well, let me try it on the control surfaces, even though they are somewhat delicate uh, pieces. And I was concerned about the media getting, getting up inside, but I figured, well, let me just go ahead and try it. Well, it worked very well, actually. As you can see, uh, we stripped the paint off of the rudder here. This, I tried to plug all the holes as best I could, but media still did get down inside of it, but I'm able to flush that out with water and high pressure air, so that's not an issue. And it just did a fabulous job. It, it removed all the paint, all the old glue, especially in areas where um, you know the fabric would be wrapped around, be layers and layers of fabric and dope. That all came off really, really nice. And uh, so this piece has just come along really good. Although it did have one serious problem, and that is the very bottom uh, of the rudder has this big cap piece that goes on here. Um, this piece has a hole in the bottom of it, which is a drain hole. And so this airplane sitting outside and it happens to get caught in some weather or rain, any kind of water that builds up in here is gonna get drained into the bottom of this and it's gonna come out of this little hole. Well, unfortunately, this hole was covered. Also, the airplane kind of sits at an angle when it's sitting on the ground. Some of the water runs down to here and there's no drain hole down here, although there's a little rivet hole here. And because of that, over the years, I corroded a spot here. And when I removed the fabric, there was a big lop of tape here. And I took the tape off and there was a hole. <laughs> somebody, somebody before decided, well, they're not even going to bother trying to fix that. So they just taped over it. Uh, so, of course, we can't deal with that uh, that way. So what I did was I, I cut that out. And we had a little piece of magnesium that we got off of an old uh, wingtip that we have. And we made a piece that fit in there, gave it to Dave and he welded it in there, sanded it smooth, and now the piece is, is repaired. I think what we might do is actually we might add a little drain hole um, on, the, on the back side of this just to help any kind of water that accumulates so that doesn't happen again. Um, but the piece had some dents in it. Uh, it's pretty good. We're going to clean it out and prime that, but that piece is saved. Thank God, because if you can believe this, this is made out of a single piece of, of magnesium. I thought it was two pieces and then it was welded down the center. It is not. It was hand formed out of one piece of material. So pretty impressive there. Would not want to have to try to make that or have Rick try to make that. So that is saved. Um, the other thing that we have to do is electrical work. Um, the airplane has a pretty simple electrical system. Um, not too much wiring compared to some other airplanes I've dealt with, but it does have a uh, rudder light that goes back here and it has a couple of wires that run up through the tail. Uh, actually, one of the reasons we had to take this off also was I had to get to this. There's a piece of conduit that runs up inside of here and uh, all kind of sits up inside like that. And so this piece here uh, is mainly pretty bad. Uh, the conduit piece is savable, 
but the wiring is old and brittle. That's all going to have to be replaced. Uh, the shielding is all bad, and the little leather protector thing is also bad. So before I can actually reassemble this, I got to figure out how to replace all this. So I sourced wire. Um, of course, you could put any wire in here, any kind of aircraft wire, but again, trying to stay original, I'm trying to stay true to the colors. This airplane has black and red wire throughout it. That's all it is, just black and red. I found it's a company that makes aircraft wire that's the right color, so that's good. And you're actually able still to buy uh, shielding. Um, you can buy this from a company that makes electrical shielding, so um, that's not an issue either, so I have some of that coming. But what's very interesting about the 108, and a lot of German airplanes, I guess for the most part, is that there are no soldered connections in the airplane at all. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting how they did this. These little has these little plugs that plugs everything into the next uh, conduit that comes along that gets power to the light. And inside the plug, there's these little pins. That's one of the little pins right there. Instead of soldering the wire to that, uh, this little pin has a tiny little screw and they actually took the bare wire, they soldered a little bit of hardness to the end of that wire and they put it inside of this little clamp and then the screw actually closes the clamp and it holds it in place. The whole airplane is that way. I've never actually worked on an airplane where there's no solder connections. Um, but the and Germans just did it a little bit differently, which is actually pretty clever. So all that has to be gone through and cleaned up and uh, new wiring to be put back on. One of the other things we found out is uh, everything that connects the control surface to the airplanes uh, are these series of blocks and bearings. This is actually the piece that attaches um, on the bottom of the rudder, actually fits in here like that, and that attaches it to the rest of the airplane. Um, I pulled these out because these things were just covered in paint, dope, and dirt. Um, they were just, they, they were unrecognizable. Uh, this totally black, so we took those out. It's a magnesium block, aluminum fitting here, and then a, and then a bearing. And this actually bearing block here is actually held in with a rivet. So we can't actually take that apart, but this is all in good shape, so we don't have to deal with that. A really nice piece. Again, beautiful engineering by the Germans. And this piece is actually interesting because it was shared with the BF-109 because all these parts are stamped 108 and 108 on uh, all, all, the, all the parts. This particular part actually has 109 stamped on it. So it must have been a shared part uh, that was used on the fighter that the Germans built at the same time. Uh, the ailerons and the elevators are back here. Those actually didn't have any serious problems. Some light corrosion on them, they're going through uh, corrosion control just to remove some of that. The left aileron had a repair done to it that was in, probably caused by the ground loop that it was in, um, but that repair is actually very sound and it was very well done, so we're gonna leave that intact. Um, but just the overall condition of the control surfaces themselves are, are, are very, very nice. Now the two flaps, I haven't done anything with those yet because the left flap, of course, is the flap that was, uh, had a lot of damage to it and was completely rebuilt. I think we've actually chosen to probably rebuild that flap completely or hopefully maybe find another replacement. And the right flap has, uh, needs to have major surgery done to it also uh, as a repair. Uh, so those two pieces I have not removed the paint off of yet until we figure out uh, what kind of repairs have to be made. But overall, very happy with the condition of the control services. And once these all get cleaned up, uh, they'll go through primer. Now I could just prime the pieces and leave them in the, in the primer that we used, but these pieces were originally gray. And so even though you're not going to see it, I'm going to paint them gray uh, just to be true to the airplane. All right, last thing we're going to talk about in this episode is the never-ending search for parts, uh, missing parts, incorrect parts. Uh, in the case of the 108, um, still trying to find some things for the instrument panel here because we know there are some things that are incorrect here. Uh, one of the things right here is the artificial horizon. Now, some 108s were actually built as like IFR uh, kind of aircraft. It was an option. You can actually buy it as a, as a package. Uh, and this airplane has that, so it has an artificial horizon. But somewhere along the airplane's career, uh, this item was replaced. Uh, with an Italian artificial horizon, so it's not correct. Um, but again, sourcing parts, getting on eBay. eBay is such a wonderful thing. And uh, we actually found an original uh, artificial horizon uh, that's going to go into the airplane. Now, of course, this probably has to be sent out 
and get overhauled. Um, that is the correct piece that goes in that. And I know this because the book tells me the correct uh, part numbers for everything. Uh, so we are purchasing the right uh, piece. Uh, another thing that was actually uh, kind of a difficult thing to find and I knew it was wrong was uh, up here. Uh, this is actually an amp meter and this was actually added. I'm pretty sure this was added after the airplane was sent to South America. Somebody needed to uh, decide they needed to see what kind of electricity or current they had so they added this. But I think originally here was a clock. Uh, from all the photographs that I've seen, and again, source the clock. And I actually had two different types in the 108, but this is the one that we're going to put in. Um, not cheap, not cheap at all. <laughs> and that piece goes right there. That's going to be a, a nice addition. Uh, none of this stuff actually is cheap. That was about $300. The Artificial Horizon was another $300. So this, this the German instruments are a little pricey. Uh, American stuff is there's a lot of it out there, so you could buy a core instrument for like $40, $50. Um, but what I found with a lot of the German instruments and odds and ends and things that go inside a cockpit, it can get kind of pricey because they're not, uh, they're, they're pretty rare components. So once you find them, you have to kind of grab them up. Last thing I was looking for, uh, and there's a few other things, but one thing I was looking for is this right here. Uh, in this hole, there's a switch that somebody put in here, and this switch is not original. Uh, and from photographs and from the book, what's supposed to be here is a pedo heat indication light. Uh, this switch right here is for pedo heat, and you turn that on, a light came on, and this was done because you didn't want to burn the element out. If you left it on too long, you can burn the element in the pedo tube. So they put a little indicator light. And I'm thinking, oh my, where am I going to find that? Well, again, oh, actually, I got all this stuff from the same person on eBay. Not only did I find the original part, I found the original part in the original box. <laughs> I think the box is actually cooler than the part itself. And uh, so there it is. And so we're just gonna take that out and that piece that slides inside that little hole there. And it gets wired up. And uh, it's our indicator light for the pedo. So again, even though I'm not actually working in the cockpit, not doing, uh, planning to pull this out at any time soon, I'm always on the lookout for parts. Uh, I'm always on the lookout just to see what else the airplane needs. And again, one of the things that's great about restoration is that a lot of times when you're working on a certain thing, you just get tired of working on it, like the control service, for example, cleaning all those and stripping the paint off and doing the corrosion control. After a couple of days of that, two, three days, I'm like, oh man, I'm just tired of doing this. This is just boring. It's monotonous. So I'll go off and I'll get on the computer, get on eBay, and I start looking for stuff for the airplane. So it's kind of nice to kind of move around and it keeps the project interesting because uh, if you stay too long on one thing, uh, it tends to get tedious and boring. But that's basically it. We're moving along here. We hopefully that you know, this year uh, we're going to get a lot more done on the project. Uh, so hopefully uh, check back with the next uh, few episodes coming up. And thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments. And we'll see you next time.